Diane Sweeney, and I'm the author of Student-Centered Coaching the Moves and Leading Student-Centered Coaching, and today I'd like to speak with you about coaching labs. Coaching labs are something our team has been facilitating for almost 15 years now. They really began in our partnership with Denver Public Schools and were, I think, really inspired by a lot of the work that was happening with learning labs for teachers with opportunities for teachers to observe each other in classrooms and learn from that. As I share with you some strategies for coaching labs today, I just wanted to mention I'll be posting the protocol and some other guidelines and norms for these types of coaching observations on my blog. So if you're curious about taking these on and facilitating them, I'm happy to share our resources around how to do that. Most of the time, coaching labs are facilitated by our team because we have a ton of experience making sure it's safe, making sure the coach has been carefully planned with, making sure nobody's going to be surprised by anything at all. Um, but we do think that district leaders can facilitate coaching labs. We oftentimes hand off the process after a few runs with our team and then folks will feel comfortable taking on these coaching labs themselves. Um, if you're f comfortable with protocols and with protocol-based observations, there's no reason you can't use the protocol that I shared in my blog to facilitate them yourself. But just be sure, always use a protocol, always set norms, Always, always, always take care of the people who are taking risks. We have found that the protocol creates learning no matter what, and so we can have a safe environment and we can also learn at the same time. And that's really, I think, the beauty of coaching labs. It creates context, it creates meaning, and it nudges our thinking, but it does so in a way that's collaborative and classroom embedded. So you may be wondering, who hosts a coaching lab? Who, who should be the person to host? And we always emphasize that a coaching lab is not about the perfection. It's not about exemplary coaching. It's typically a person who's a risk taker, who's willing to jump in and try something in front of colleagues, learn in front of colleagues. And so we like to emphasize that the people who host coaching labs are learners. They're risk takers. They're not perfect coaches. Um, they also need to know that they'll be highly supported through the process. Using a protocol that we use really creates that safety for coaches, and that safety is key. So we always start with a pre-brief, just like a learning lab would. A pre-brief is when we set the stage. It's when we create um, meaning, and a coach who's hosting the coaching lab will provide a backdrop for the work. Who are the, who's the teacher they'll be working with? What's been? Where are they in their coaching cycle? What kind of coaching practices have been in place? What um, challenges have there been, if any? What tools has the coach generated and been using? to support his or her work. So lots of um, just providing a backdrop. The facilitator oftentimes then at that point will also provide some norms and some guidelines for observation because as soon as the pre-brief ends, we move into the second part of a coaching lab. And the second part of a coaching lab is the observation itself. And for us, we like to do a two-part observation. The first part is an in-classroom coaching experience. So we like to see the coach and teacher working together with kids because we find that coaching in the classroom is where most of our really rich work happens. So you'll see a coach and a teacher co-teaching, you'll see a coach and a teacher working side by side with kids, you'll see a coach using our co-teaching moves like noticing and naming and thinking aloud and micro-modeling, um, and we'll be observing that as it plays out. 
One layer we like to also add in to the classroom-based observation is for observers to practice the coaching move of noticing and naming. So we'll give the coaches a grid of student names and we'll challenge them to collect as much evidence as they can as they're watching kids work and learn and engage and those are always related to the look for's or the learning targets. The learning target typically is explicitly shared in that pre-brief so that when we get into the classroom we know that these students are using a specific strategy for multiplication or these students are um, using a, a specific um, bit of academic language that's what they're going for so we'll we'll be really listening for the right things as we're practicing that noticing and naming strategy it's kind of fun towards the end of that classroom based observation or the lesson let's just say it's kind of fun then to prompt the observing coaches to look for some trends what are you seeing happening what are some trends you see with the kids with the students in, in their learning that uh, you can consolidate right now since you're in there with them watching them digging in as learners. That's a move we want to be making constantly as coaches so it gives us a chance to just think at, think at that synthesis type level with you know with regard to where the kids are as learners. The second part of the observation then is going to be typically a planning conversation. So the coach and teacher just had a rich experience with kids. Now it's time to get in and sit down together and figure out what next. So the planning conversation will always use student evidence. We'll have insights because we really were watching that. And we fishbowl that. We don't get involved. We don't talk. But we'll listen in as they make meaning from what just happened. And they think about next steps for instruction, how they'll differentiate. Uh, what resources they're going to need, when they're going to co-teach next time, wh what that will look like. So that's typically about 30 minutes. Then, the last part is when the coaches make meaning of all that they saw. And we typically ask the teacher to return to her classroom or his classroom because we want to be able to talk at the coaching level, coaching practice level, which isn't necessarily relevant to the teacher. So the first um, part of this process of the debrief is really a celebration. So we'll do a basic round of just what did I notice? What did we see? What did we hear? What coaching moves were in play? Whether they were in the classroom or whether they were, you know, in the planning conversation. And then that typically is your first round of your debriefing. Then your second round is what does it mean? And that's when the implications and the meanings start coming up. I saw the coach and teacher sitting side by side during conferences and, and and reflecting throughout. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, it means that maybe we shouldn't um, divide and conquer when we're in classrooms. So you see how that, what I saw, connects directly to what does it mean. Then the next round, and, and we'll do these rounds where we'll give everyone a chance to share. Usually a coaching lab is about 12-ish people, maybe eight people. So everybody has a voice in the conversation. So as the folks are sharing out and they're thinking about what they saw, then it's, what do I wonder? At this point, the, the hosting coach re-enters the conversation. The first bit of the debrief, usually they're just listening because we don't want them to have to respond to everything. But by this, by this round, when you're in the what, are you, what do I wonder round, you're really thinking a lot about, okay, this is a question I have for that hosting coach. How, how did you think through that? Or what were you thinking in that moment? Those sorts of things. And then what are my next steps? What are my next steps is the last stage of the, of the debrief. So um, it's just a, it's an easy way to just dig in and share what you're going to do and make meaning and come up with a game plan. Thanks so much for listening. If you're interested in student-centered coaching, you can check out my books on the subject or our website, and that information will come up shortly. Have a great day.